Testing, check, check, one, two, three. Hello and welcome to the Ninja Robot Studio LLC stream where I play video games and VR experiences and talk through them from a UX designer's perspective. Sorry I'm running a little bit late today, um, having technical issues with my camera and getting Quest to work with the Oculus platform that doesn't seem to be supported anymore so constant errors on there. So sorry running late, um, that is the fun of tech and emerging tech. Um, so we play video games and VR experiences and talk through them from a UX designer's perspective. And hi, Basilius, I was having trouble um, getting going. Um, so we play through them because video games have a direct and in heavy influence on VR and XR development. So we it makes sense that we would study video games and un to understand how to make better experiences. And um, today we usually go through the pillars of gaming UX and talk about the best practice for training since we're talking about training right now. But since i um, running late and I also have a meeting that I have to go to in a little bit, not as much time to do all of that today. So I'm going to just go ahead and share the um, video where I go through and explain the pillars of gaming UX in more detail. And um, I'm going to share that in the chat and I'll also share it in the show notes so that you can check those out later. And the article on training will also go in there. But we like to review those before we get into any experience so that they're fresh on our minds as we go into, um, as we think through it. And we also wanna think through the roses, thorns, and buds um, while we're going through it, take notes, and then we can do it as an exercise together once I've walked through it. So today, I'm gonna to be talking first steps. Um, this is one of the games whenever, any, whenever I talk to anyone about onboarding or training or anything. I tell them go try this out, go study this thing because it's an excellent onboarding experience. Um, and we're gonna walk through it now. Um, let me get my headset set up. Before that, did you have questions or anything? Before I, uh, cause I'm not gonna be able to see the chat once I get into the quest because I don't have that set up to where I can see the chat in, in the headset, at least on the Oculus platform. Works on Steam, but not on... I haven't gotten it to work on Oculus. Okay. Well, give me a moment while I get that going. going to hear quiet because I'm going to turn. I'm hoping this game sound works. So let's see if it does. So we missed the beginning, auto play. And it froze on the stream though, so it doesn't look the same on the stream as it does 
than what I'm seeing in the headset. So I'm going to try to restart it. Oh, now you can see it. Okay, it caught up. I'm going to see if I can restart it so that you can see the whole thing. Because the starting is important. Okay. I might regret restarting it. <laughs> Sorry, now you're not going to see anything because I'm restarting. Uh oh, it put me into this awesome thing that I didn't tell it to. That's the one we're doing next week. <laughs> I'm loving my PC today. Do you like PCs? They're my favorite. Okay, can you see what's happening? No. Okay, now you can. Okay. But I'm not hearing any sound. Huh. But, so there's music playing. It's very inspirational music. And you can see um, that it's, when you first walk into a VR experience, you have this awe factor that... Um, just makes you want to look around and see everything. But they're taking care of that by getting that awe factor out of the way for you. So you can just see what's going on. The motion is carefully designed so not to make you sick. Um, you're staying stable. And then there's small elements that are moving around in the world. And um, getting, oh, getting you over that initial like, oh, wow, VR is so cool. And now it's slowly like building in. Um, building in the scene for you, transitioning so it's not abrupt, you're not like shocked or surprised by anything. But you're not going to be able to hear the narrator. So there is a narrator that is saying everything that's on that screen up there. This grid shows the boundaries, the play area, don't move or reach beyond it. So that's showing you your natural barrier that's in the game. What I don't like about it is that it's automatically progressing the dialogue because I missed part of it because I was still like adjusting and looking around and stuff. And so it's important not to auto progress for them, let them manually progress the dialogue in case they're like still getting set up like I was, or getting distracted by something outside the headset, you want them to be able to progress that or have some kind of cues. Because, okay. for example, right now this audio is not working for some reason, so I have to read it, but I'm not, I didn't even know that it was progressing because I didn't hear it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, so look at my hands, and I, you can see that the controllers are emulated in my hands, which is excellent for a brand new experience, and it's tracking my fingers, not completely because my fingers are not touching my grip button, but, um, so that's weird, but, so it's wanting me to press all the glowing buttons to get used to their placement on the controller and then move the thumbsticks around. And again, the narrator is saying the same thing that's on the screen back there, which is excellent, backing up what the narrator is saying with text. In case someone can't hear, um, they can still see. But at this point, they've stopped the auto progression of the dialogue, and they're waiting for you to complete what it is that you're wanting to complete. They're wanting you to complete. And it's giving a, so pay attention to the micro interaction on the thumbstick when I push it, click it in. So you saw the little uh, confetti 
And there's also a haptic feedback that's happening at the same time. So I'm getting multiple modes of feedback. And if you pay attention, my thumbs are glowing because that's what um, finger they want you to use. So there's a ton of different multiple like inputs saying, do this. This thumbstick, this thumb, press it in, success. And then the screen also said something. And uh, the narrator says something too, I think. I just can't hear it right now. Um, now, same thing for squeeze the last trigger. The index fingers are now what's pointing. Can you see them? I need to make sure I'm in view. Um, so press confetti and haptic because the Oculus has um, the touch controllers have where you can actually provide haptics on the actual button instead of just the entire controller. Some of the controllers are limited to where you can just make the whole controller vibrate, but with the Quest, you can actually make the button itself vibrate. So that is the very detailed um, haptic feedback on the buttons. And now the same thing, squeeze the right grip. You've got a tooltip coming out of the button that is glowing. And you've got your words up on the screen saying locate the grip buttons and squeeze them with your middle fingers. And when we do that, we get a haptic and confetti saying we success. I believe there is a sound effect that happens when you do that as well, but I can't hear it right now. And same thing. Now let's see what your hands can do. So now it's converting to where it's just my hands. So at this point, it's hoping that I can remember, but what you can't see or feel is that it's still doing that haptic feedback on the actual controller. So I still feel it. And it's making that finger glow. It's telling me to squeeze the grip to make a fist. So the middle finger is what I'm supposed to be using on the grip, uh, the, which is how I'm holding it, which it taught me how to do when I was looking at it with the controller in my hand. Doing that. Now use your index finger to push the button in front of you. And there's haptic feedback when I push down on the button. And so you saw a little confetti and everything saying success. I'm gonna try to reset the play space. Um, that did not work. Um, so I don't know how to do that when it's on the Oculus Link because it usually you just press down the little home button, but all that did was bring up the menu. Yeah, it doesn't let you do that. So I guess I can't reset the play space. But you can see everything fine though. Um, so reach your hand out to the block. As I'm reaching my hand out, the tooltip changes. Once I get in proximity to the block, it changes and says squeeze the grip to grab. And I got a little bit of haptic feedback and I'm picking it up and I can feel haptic feedback, so it, making it feel like I've got this thing in my hand. And release grip to drop. So it changed again, step by step. And it's mimic and it's mirroring what it says on this tooltip on the board back there. And um, the narrator is also saying everything as well. So drop it and now your virtual hands can do just about anything. Go ahead and play with some of these items. And now we've got new items that just showed up. And they are using physics. So these things behave as you expect. Your hand is gripping it as you would expect it to grip it. The animation is changing to make it look like you would expect. And when you drop it, it behaves like it would in real life. And um, respawns if you drop it on the ground. And if you pick up the little ball, it's smaller, and you can see that the hand position has changed to look like you would if you were picking up a little object. And it behaves like you would expect. Except that, that was a little weird. So hold the grip with the middle finger to grab, and it's holding it like you're supposed to hold a paddle. And now 
I'm terrible with this, but there you go. And it behaves like you would expect. And then hold the grip with the middle finger to grab. I am too short to reach that other one. Um, paper airplane. And I'm, ter I'm not left-handed. <laughs> okay, there we go. And it gives like contrail and everything. And now a new thing just popped up on the desk. So it's slowly introducing new things. And so now we've got a cartridge with first contact in it. We're going to play that one um, next week. But so this is what we were talking about with an onboarding experience that goes step by step. It waits for you to do one step. It shows you that you have successfully completed that step. There's tons of different types of feedback going on at the same time. And it's waiting for you to finish before it proceeds to the next thing. And so it's detecting and letting you go at your own pace. And so it, and it's also using your expected um, physics that you would expect. And since we're doing first contact next time, we're not going to go through this whole thing, but you, it's behaving like you would expect um, a console to behave. Push the button, and there's some feedback, and now it's going to change the world into the next thing, which is first contact, which is where you get to play with a robot. Um, this is an older version. This is the original version of um, the onboarding. It's a little different to what you see on the quest. We're not going to do first contact today, but we'll do that next week. But it is an awesome experience. It's one of the first experiences. So let me get my headset off um, so we can talk about first contact, our first steps. Okay. I was hoping that since I was running it on the Oculus that you'd be able to hear the sound. Because I could have could have just run it on the quest. <laughs> it was way better than wrench and I actually finished it. <laughs> Let me get um, my browser working. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I tell everyone to study if they're wanting to look at an onboarding. Um, it's very well thought out, well done. Um, and the Oculus Quest version is, is actually longer than that. Um, what we were looking at was the very original version that Oculus did um, before Facebook bought them. It's called First Steps. Oculus first steps. This, this is what we're doing this week. And you can get it on the quest and try it out. It's a little longer on the quest. I was doing it on here on the Oculus desktop because I was hoping that that would make the sound work, but it didn't for whatever reason. Because um, the sound is also a big part of it too because you're getting audio feedback as well. So let's talk about rose thorns and buds. So again, for a recap, rose thorn bud exercise is a really quick and simple way of doing critical thinking, um, critical analysis of something. Um, so the roses are what went well, what was a highlight, what did you like, and um, 
we keep them on, I like to keep them on post-it so that it's short and concise because it's easy to get into dissertation mode and report mode and write long sentences and explanations for things. But when you're doing rapid, rapid analysis and research over a lot of different things, and it's better to just keep it short and simple and then you can then take that and make it into multiple other outputs at a, a future time and if you check out the all the videos on demand on YouTube you'll see um, examples of me doing this um, for the platformers I did I went through the synthesis of all of the Rose Thorn Bud exercises I did for the platformer games that I had played. I'll do it again for this as well. Um, I think next week, first contact is the last one we're going to do in this series. And then after that, I'll start doing this synthesis on that to see if there's anything we can see from that, any trends or anything. See if there's anything, um, any more new material I can add on best practices for uh, training for NVR, we'll see. So um, the thorns are then, what didn't go well? What was a low point? What did you not like? And we want to keep the roses because a lot of people like to just focus on the thorns and what to do about them. But we like to think about the roses because we want to remember what went well and we want to know what are good practices that we can continue doing so that we don't stop doing those things. So it's good to remember the good things. And then, um, of course, the thorns are so that we can identify what needs to be fixed. And then buds are, what are our next steps to start working on fixing these things? It's, sh it's concise and clear. Here's what's going well. Here's what's not going well. Here's what we're going to do to start working on fixing it. As next steps, opportunities, um, things that follow-up questions, things like that. Like um, there is one that I was doing when I was playing Everybody, uh, Nobody Saves the World. You can see an example of me identifying a bug. And then so I mentioned in here, so now I would have to go get some details to go do a bug report. So if you're doing a real project, you would want to know how to handle the bug reports. So I talk about that in that one. If you want to go check that one out, that one is Nobody Saves the World on my YouTube uh, channel and I do have it like time sectioned out so you can skip around to see what um, you want to see. So nobody saves the world. Okay, roses. It's all kinds of things that I like about this one. So, um, and you can also uh, uh, contribute as well what things were good what were some good roses so the start it starts with a small amount of animated light and grows over time um, the animations are not overwhelming, don't cause sickness. And let's see, thinking from the beginning, music. It is cheerful, but you couldn't hear the music. Um, it's like this inspiring um, possibilities kind of music I, I don't know how to like adventure wonder I kind of I, I don't know how to explain that um The objects slowly build up in the scene over time. Um, help. Uh, I'm going to make a two posters there. Helps you 
get acclimated to this physical, to the, I would say a digital space. And the um, there's voiceover repeating everything on the the sign at the back uh, on the back wall. And there's like multiple, and you have to get in there and like try it yourself to really see what's going on. Um, all the different sensory inputs and everything. Um, multiple types of sensory feedback. Indicating success. And it walks you step by step. Through each type of interaction. Lets you go at your own pace. And I like that the tooltips update based on context and proximity, which is something that I've used as a um, inspiration for training um, tutorials that I've done in the past. Um, that and it works. It, it does work um, to train people. Um, can you think of any other? Physics works as expected. Um, physics and gravity work as expected. Um, airplanes didn't fly, which is exactly how it is in real life for me. Paper airplanes don't fly, so I can't throw. Um, the tooltips were awesome. I love those tooltips. Um, there was a lot of detail in those tooltips. It was really good. Um, finger um, highlights. Finger needed to push button. I don't know how to say that shortly. <laughs> Finger highlights. Um, or um, which button to press. Um, see, the grip behaviors were realistic. Yeah. Grip. There are tons of things. Tons of good things about this and it's a short experience but within that short experience it's just a very well done uh, tutorial um, there were some things that were wrong like the auto progression at the very beginning was um, so I missed some stuff but for the most part it's excellent um, and again sorry that you couldn't hear the sound I was um, it worked last week with the sound. I, I don't know why I didn't this week. Um, but yeah, you have to like get in there, try it out. Do you have a quest? Or what do you have? Do you have a headset? There is also a video. Um, you could just you oh, okay. You could just watch that online. You could find a let's play. Um, that's one of the things that I do is I'll, uh, whenever I don't have a game, but I need footage, 
or I need footage really quickly, but I don't have time to like go dig out my headset and hook it up and all that because I have a small space so I can't leave it hooked up. Um, is I'll just Google uh, Let's Play, whatever. And um, then that'll find um, videos. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So then um, that way you can find videos of people playing through stuff. And then you could do that for now. Or you could also um, just get a cardboard and try out. There's some really great experiences that you can try out on the N360 on the Google Cardboard. If you get this app called Within, there's this app called Within, and it has a lot of 360 experiences in there. And um, Baobab Studios has excellent um, little short films that are in 360 that um, you can learn a ton from just by watching those videos. How are they handling um, transitions? Because it's different than 2D film. And we're getting off topic, but that's fine. But it's different than 2D film because you can't pan and zoom the camera for people. With that, that's important to know. Is that that's going to make people sick? And anytime I get into a 360 film that somebody's just created, like a documentary or something, and they start moving me, I have to get, I have to get out. I can't because that I know it's going to make me sick. But they don't do that. They actually. Um, st they stick you in place. You're grounded well. You don't have to move and they move the characters and around you so you don't have to like you're not going to get sick they're going to bring the story to you which is great um so you can study and you can study how the characters behave to get you to look where they want you to look at the sound that they use to get you to look where they want you to look instead of panning for you so it's still a good um good thing even even with cardboard that's actually how i started um, is cardboard because I didn't have the money for a headset because back then they didn't have a standalone even they and they were a lot more expensive and you had to have a gaming PC and I didn't have the money for all that so I just got a cardboard and tried as many cardboard experiences that I could get are you Android or iOS you can get you can get this on either but if you're but if you're on the Android uh, you're Android Awesome. So you can look up this experience called. Now I have to figure out what it, I have to remember what it's called. Um, let's see. Google Play. I, I'm, I'm iOS, so. But I borrowed an Android once to try this. <laughs> um, it's called. Let's see. Google. Uh. Is it Daydream Labs? I don't think it's Daydream Labs. Cardboard Design Lab. This one. This one? Yeah, <laughs> Memory Crank. Oh, um, iOS lover? <laughs> I've been on Apple forever. <laughs> um, so this one? Um, it does not have good reviews, but that's because they, the people that were reviewing it don't know how to use a cardboard headset. Um, but the actual experience teaches you, and I actually use this one to study the foundational, um, some of the foundational best practices that I studied. This was like my first thing, because they actually take you in there, and um, yeah, it is good for design, that's why I switched to Apple. Um, this will like give you examples and let you go through and try them like teleportation and wayfinding and motion sickness and so it's great if you can get in here and try this out um, it's excellent it's called cardboard design lab I will put it in here um, I guess I can go ahead and put the link in there um, so you can try it um, since you're on Android Yeah, I wish it was available on iOS, but it's not. So anyway, um, that'll get you started. Um, so, and you can also like try out making cardboard VR games in uh, 
in Unity if you want to try it, because that is what I started doing before I could afford a headset. Um, okay. Grip behaviors were realistic. The finger highlights which button to press. Physics and gravity work as expected. Um, there was something else. Did I put multi sensory already, right? Yeah. And we talked about tooltips. Yep. Okay. I guess that's enough unless you can think of something else. The thorns. There weren't a lot of thorns. It was just that um, at the very beginning of dialogue, auto progresses. Um, so I missed, I missed the dialogue. So I was still getting adjusted and miss the dialogue about the boundary, the safety boundary. Oh yeah, I couldn't, I don't know if that is a, I don't know if that's a hardware thing or a software thing. I think, I don't know what that is. Cause um, I was using the Rift platform with the Oculus Link. So it wasn't made for that. Um, if I was doing it on the Quest, that would have worked. I would have been able to reset the scene. But, um, so can't, can't reset the scene. Don't, not clear how to do it. That's still the case, not clear how to do it. Um, And that is a um, Oculus thing, not a not a first steps thing. And unless maybe that's something that you might want to consider including in the tutorial, they'll know. Maybe. I don't even know if it's. It has to be possible on the Rift. Um. So yeah. Um. Yeah, and I still, I don't understand why the sound didn't work. Go back one or more steps. Um, hmm. I'm wondering if they, let's go back one or more steps. Say more. It's like, what did you mean? Okay, so possibly good idea to be able to restart from within the scene. Oh, can't restart within the scene. Um, you have to leave and what you do. You have to leave and restart. Um, yeah. Um, that, that's actually a good idea. That's a good point. Um, so I would consider... Let's see. I would consider including those buttons within the scene to go back or reset to take in consideration all interface types. So that's a bud. So that would be a bud. Um, repeat a task or something you missed. Okay. Can't restart within the scene. Can't repeat a task you may. Well, so, or go back and see something missed. Um, so, the only thing that was missed really was the dialogue at the very beginning you weren't interacting with anything at that point um here so can't you can't go back 
and repeat it. Can't reset the scene. Can't restart the scene. You have to leave and restart. And then you can't reset the scene and So the tasks that you had to do were all, you couldn't proceed with unless you successfully completed the task, but you can't like go through the glowy button stage again, but you can continue to play with the different objects. Um, but I can't go back and repeat to get the stuff I missed about the boundary. So the bud that you were saying was include how to reset scene in the tutorial. Um, down here. Allow manual progression dialog. Um, if you forget something you did to get something to work in a task, maybe I'm being picky. Um, so that would, for any tutorial, that would be the case. Yeah, if we're looking at any tutorial. Um, so let me see. Allow them to practice and retry um, tasks. So that's going to be a general we're going to put that over here in transitioning um, as a translating because uh, that is a general thing that all of them need to do. Um, I don't know that it was an issue in this one. Specifically. But it is a general good thing. Um... So we want at least one bud per thorn. Can't go back and repeat what was missed. Provide a way to restart tutorial, the restart experience within, within the app. If we did allow manual progression of the dialogue at the beginning, the um, problem would have been now we have to teach them how to do that, which is still doable, but then, um, yeah, then you have to think about, okay, now how do we teach them to auto met to manually progress the dialogue? That's going to be like, what do we need? We need tooltips. We need, um, you could have missed something. Oh. Oh, because you were writing? Okay. It is still a good thing to do because you want them to um, practice and retry. The, um, they, left, they left you free to continue playing with the airplanes and continue playing with the different blocks and the paddleboard and stuff, um, which was your time to practice. It didn't show the tooltips again, 
but um, it gave you time to practice. Now one thing that you might want to do then is, um, because I have seen this happen, um, so there's no way of bringing back tooltips once and once uh, you complete it first time. So then I have seen in usability testing that even though we have this awesome onboarding that teaches them all these things, as soon as they get into the actual experience, they can still forget it. Um, so then how can we bring back the tooltips so that they can access them and remember as they're going, um, give them a way to tips in case they forget it's especially if you're brand new to it um, and you're overwhelmed it's easy to forget because that scene wasn't overwhelming but then as soon as they get into a new experience um, that's is that's a new experience with a new awe because it's cool and now we have to practice now one of the things that they did with that um, one of the things they did with that um, experience and they did on the quest too is you had the cartridges so you could go and you can practice mini experiences uh, uh, little mini M-I-N-I -I experiences like um, playing with that robot that we're going to do next week and um, there was a, on the Oculus Quest version, you can go in and dance with a robot and you can um, play a mini shooter game. And I can't remember if there was any other experiences. I think there was at least one more, uh, maybe not. But um, it lets you practice in, uh, in additional little mini experiences. Um, and I think those little experiences also have tool tips as well. Um, the first contact for sure does. Um, so that's actually a, a rose is that it has, it provides cartridges of mini experiences for practice. which is cool. Um, so I can't think of anything else right now. Can you think of anything else? Um, so the general things that we can take out of this, some of this is already included in this uh, best practices for training. Um, I think I actually tell you to go check this one out in here. Yep, there it is. <laughs> First steps on the Oculus. Um, you're wanting... You want them to be able to practice and retry stuff. Um, because they need to gain that um, practice, in, practice increases retention. Um, and it's already a VR experience, so then what if we were translating it to an, a mixed reality or augmented reality experience? What would be some things to think about? So we would want to... Huh, so it would have to be able to detect and identify the different objects that it's teaching you how to use like for example if it's training you out in the field on something or training you how to use a machine or something it needs to be able to to identify objects in like real space somehow 
So depending on your device, there's going to be a different ways of doing that. Um, so if it's um, if it's a spatially aware device, it can detect um, objects based on like digital twin. Um, can it can identify the object? and bring up relevant information. And if, if it's not spatially aware, if it's like a weaker AR, um, you would need a marker of some kind, like a QR code or something that it can identify and then, okay, now I need to bring up this information. Um, I don't know if the technology currently that we have um, I'm not sure if the current technology um, would be able to like update tooltips in context like um, VR. I don't know enough about the tech to say. But it would only be with that type. If it's like a spatially aware type, it's not going to work with the weaker AR. Um, here, let me rearrange. <laughs> it's moving it for me, stop it. Okay. Um... So I don't know how technically possible it would be to like what it was doing here in context with the um, tooltips when once you picked it up, it would update and say, okay, now drop it by doing this. Um, I don't know if our technology is there yet. So you might have to, um, so then in that case, if it's not able to do that, would need to you would need a, they would need a way to um, yeah you can plan and look forward to it but then for now if you were still wanting to be able to teach them step by step step, step by step procedures in AR and mixed reality you would need a way for them to indicate that they've completed a step and that way it can tell um, it can tell them, okay, I'm done with this step, now what's the next thing? Yeah, um, but you can if you want to do the future planning and what would a future AR or a smart mixed reality training experience look like um, in the future and that way we can work towards getting the technology there. That's always a good thing. But if we're wanting to create something now, what can we do in the meantime to work around that? Um, but this would also... Um, you would also need that for if you're doing a um, n one that's not spatially aware, you would definitely need a way to indicate what's the next step because um, that's definitely not going to be smart enough to know. 
So then that would probably be any of your like smartphones and stuff. And I don't think that the, I don't think the glasses are there yet, the mixed reality glasses. I don't think they're there yet, but I could be wrong, but I don't think they are. So there, there probably needs to be a way to indicate I'm done with this deck, what's the next step? Because it's easier with VR because you have like full control over the whole environment because um, you've made it. But you haven't necessarily made the environment with a mixed reality experience because it has to interact with the real world. So I... Do you have any questions? I can't think of anything else right now. Any other questions about like anything besides this as well? It's like not right now. If you think of them, let me know. I think you've got me on LinkedIn, right? Uh, and then YouTube, yeah. Um, yeah, you can also just ask on YouTube once I get this video up there. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Um, so yeah, I think I guess that's it. Thanks for watching, and yeah, be sure to check out the cardboard stuff. Um, that'll get you uh, started on and on getting into the into it and that um cardboard design lab one is it's like i tore that thing apart when i was uh <laughs> um studying uh when i first started studying uh screenshots 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 everything study and so yeah um go ahead and oh cool thanks thanks for that um and yeah, and then that'll get you started into VR. Yeah, there's some cool ones out there too. I mean, you can get um, you can get a cardboard one for really cheap, or you can get a plastic one that's a little bit better, that'll last you longer, um, that's more comfortable. Um, and those are pretty cheap too. Uh, I think I think you can still get one of those in the teens, uh, in the teens and dollars. Um, last I checked, but it's been a while. Um, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Have a good week. Oh, cool. Oh, is it? Cool. What, what school are you going to? Or you can link me, link me that if you don't want to share that on stream. <laughs> But I'll see you next time. Thanks.